So the first question is, what is the difference between planning and scheduling? We all have different definitions of these two words, so I'll give you uh, what I think of as planning and scheduling so that give you context for the rest of this presentation. Planning looks up more long, long term, and scheduling is, is more the short term, could be down to the seconds and minutes. With planning, we aggregate the forecast, we aggregate the supply, and we put them into time buckets. The objective is to determine what to make in each time bucket, where to make it, and how much to make. With scheduling, we're actually sequencing the jobs and creating a work list that could be released to the shop floor. When creating a schedule, it must honor all the constraints. It must be practical. So advanced planning, we call it uh, graphical master production schedule, GMPS. It sits before the MRP process. The output from GMPS flows into the, M the MRP and then into advanced planning and the uh, APS. The input is firm sales orders along with forecasted demand. The target stock levels can be maintained in terms of forecasted demand. The GMPS supports decisions such as how many shifts would uh, we schedule to work on a given week, whether to purchase additional equipment, is it time to train workers on additional skill sets? Is it time for a factory expansion? Now advanced scheduling is detailed execution. It's putting the jobs in the sequence that you're going to run them and creating the work list. But it's also managing changes that happen in production. Advanced scheduling allows you to immediately see the impacts of production interruptions, machine breakdowns, or parts being scrapped. You can immediately repair your solution to resync after production variations. Advanced scheduling supports decisions through what if. You can create different scenarios and answer the questions such as, what is the cost of accepting an urgent order? What is the best time to take down a machine for planned maintenance? What's the cost benefit trade-off of adding an overtime shift this weekend? You can try different scenarios to trade off efficiency, levels of WIP, customer service, or other KPIs and see the full impact of each scenario. Let's go into the details of advanced planning. The input to GMPS is your current stock levels, your forecast, and your sales orders. You also have your resource capabilities and your target stock levels defined by SKU. Again, these target stock levels can be dynamically calculated based on the forecast. The output is an achievable, achievable production load for each product. So the challenge is that when your forecasted shipments for a given time period exceed your capacity, you must either make the product earlier or move the production to another facility. Here you see that our capacity, our forecasted demand exceeds our capacity in April, November, and December. So what a typical GMPS algorithm would do is move that capacity to an earlier month here. It fills in October, then September with that additional that additional forecast is pulled forward. And there we have it. Whenever a change in demand occurs, you need to be able to quickly assess if you will be able to meet the new requirements. Highlighting potential problems early allows action to be taken to balance demand and capacity so that you optimize your production operations. Here we see each tan bar is my forecasted demand. The purple bars are my production plan. And the blue area is my target and minimum stock levels. 
So I want my inventory level to be floating somewhere in that blue area. Now what is advanced scheduling? Advanced scheduling tools for, uh, for a scheduling tool to be effective at optimizing your production processes, it must produce a feasible schedule. It's only possible to produce a feasible schedule if you have an accurate model. You must have a scheduling tool flexible enough to model your manufacturing processes. So there are several capabilities that advanced scheduling solutions must include. First, the scheduling tool must be able to it must have the ability to optimize for efficiency and allow the user to trade off between reduced setup time and meeting ship dates. Second, the scheduling tool must be flexible enough to support multiple constraints, which would allow you to model all constraints, whether it's warehouse size, tank size, labor skill sets. It's not just equipment capacity. Third, an advanced scheduling tool must be able to consider all the materials are available and if you receive a call from a, a supplier that one of your uh, material deliveries is going to be delayed, that your schedule immediately reacts to that uh, uh, new development. Advanced scheduling tools must include what if capabilities so you can do scenario planning. You can run different scenarios and compare the impact of different scheduling actions. If I force this hot order into the schedule, what's the impact on other orders? If I push this job to a different resource, how will it impact my cost? If I schedule overtime this weekend, what is the cost impact and will it solve my late orders? But it's not just creating an optimal schedule. You need a scheduling tool that can respond to production interruptions, a machine breakdown, a part being scrapped, or actual production rates varying from what was expected. And you need tight integration with the shop floor, or your shop super supervisors won't collaborate with the scheduler. When there is an issue in production, the shop floor supervisor will make an ad hoc decision without visibility to the entire picture. Likewise, the scheduler won't be able to respond to production variations and the schedule won't be accurate. What are the benefits to an advanced scheduling? The benefits are significant and typically the return on investment is measured in weeks. We have 150 case studies on the Practor website and the uh, the benefits listed here are some of the benefits that you'll find in those case studies. What I'd encourage you to do is to go to the website and pull up a dozen or so case studies related just to your industry and uh, see what benefits those other clients have experienced. Now, Practor has a number of tools for visualizing the schedule. This is the tool that the scheduler spends most of their time in. It is also an electronic planning board. <clears throat> I have resources down the left here, time across the top, and I've given each job a different color so that you can visualize the, the different jobs in the schedule. Now, to understand an electronic planning board if you've never seen it before, let's start with all of our jobs being unscheduled. I could manually drag a job onto the schedule and Practor would understand this is a turning operation. My lathe can do turning. My lathe requires an operator. My machining center can also do turning. It's a more sophisticated piece of equipment. It does not require an operator, but it requires a supervisor to set it up. So when I run the automated algorithm, do one-click scheduling, Practor is going to have some options as to which resource to schedule the, the operation step on. So I could manually create my schedule with drag and drop. 
And you can see here that Preactor understands the linkage between the different operation steps. The second operation step in this example cannot start until the first operation step is completed. Now, you would not want to manually create your schedule. You'd want to do one-click scheduling. So there it is. And I could highlight one order, see just one order flowing through the shop. Now, as I look at my schedule, I see that I've got some time where my equipment is available and nothing is scheduled. Typically, from a scheduling point of view, that's not a good thing. Why might that be? Well, I have a number of other constraints. I have my red bar here shows me I've got a limitation of three operators available to me. I've got one supervisor, and I've got power it varies at different times of the day based on a calendar. And if I look at these two together at the same time, if I drag through my plot window up above, I see that down below as I drag through, the green bar shows me how many operators I'm using. Up above, it shows me which operation steps are using an operator. Very quickly, I can see it's these other constraints that are limiting my solution, my ability to optimize my equipment. What I could do is I could disable those other constraints, reschedule, and now I see a much more compact solution. My equipment is being used much more efficiently. But to do that, I would need seven operators, a second supervisor, and I would need power available beyond what I have today. Now, I could use this as a long-term planning tool to look out into the future and say, if I hired another worker or trained another worker on another skill set, bought another tool, what would my, how would it impact my throughput? But in the short term, these constraints are rather fixed. So I'm going to put my schedule back the way it was. Now as I'm looking at my schedule here, the first thing I notice is that I've got a red bar over this job. This tells me that this job is late. I also have the red text. I can manually drag this job to the front of the schedule, or I can change the priority, reschedule everything, and I see that that job is now first. And as I look at the schedule, it appears that there's no adverse effects of my having done that. Next, well, excuse me, let, let me get this call. Hello, this is Dave. You want 10 gears win? So you get calls like that, right, from sales? doesn't matter what industry you're in. Sales calls, they want to insert something into the schedule. I will show you a capacity to promise. I'm not going to go back to the ERP system and enter the order. I'm just going to create a what-if order right here within Preactor with a couple key clicks. And I can see that 11 days from now, without changing anything else in the schedule, I can insert that order and I could, I could make that promise today. Okay. Sales doesn't want that to be completed 10 days from now. Sales wants that inserted into the, the schedule today. So what I'll do, now I'll use a different tool. I'll pull up my editor window. And I'll change the priority here of that job. I'll reschedule everything. Now that ABC job that what if job that I entered directly into the scheduling tool is at the front of the schedule. 
but I see as a consequence I have this job this late as well as this job. Now I've got another tool that I can visualize this with. I call it the trace chart. It shows me when every job in the schedule is going to start and stop and I can use, use this for a variety of uses. I can see where I've got whip or I've got some, some lag time with that order. But if I normalize my trace chart, it shows me when every job is going to start and stop relative to the due date. So this job is going to start three and a half days before it's due. And it's going to finish three quarters of a day after it's due. Now if when I took that call, I had saved off a copy of my solution, I could pull up that comparative schedule. Now the row with the light green background was the before. Before this job was going to finish a couple hours before it was due. Now it's going to finish nearly three days late. And I could walk through job for job and see what the impact is. And if, as I'm making changes to my schedule, creating different scenarios, if I were to move one job from one resource to another that had a different cost structure, if you remember I have a lathe that requires an operator, but I've got a milling machine that doesn't require an operator, but it requires a supervisor to set it up, they've got different cost structures. I could print off a tabular report that would show me order for order what is the cost difference of the before and after. The next call I receive is from operations. Operations tells me that I've got a piece of equipment that has gone down. Now, I don't know exactly how long it's going to be down, but operations is estimating that it's going to be 24 hours, so I'm going to model that piece of equipment being down 24 hours. When I do that, all the operation on the lathe get pushed out. Now if I go to validate my schedule, it tells me that the second step of order ABC is planning to start before the first step is completed. That's not, with, with this example, that's not feasible. Now what I could do is I could pull all the orders off the schedule and I could reschedule everything and it would only take a couple seconds but quite often your schedulers have domain knowledge, tribal knowledge that they don't incorporate into the scheduling rule. They could. Practor has the ability to incorporate all the tribal knowledge into your scheduling rule but if that uh, scheduler hasn't incorporated all that knowledge into the scheduling rule, they may still like to press the button schedule and then tweak the solution afterwards, get it just the way they want. And when there's a disruption, they don't want to lose the sequence that they set up. So they could use one click repair and it will repair the schedule without, well, following whatever rules that the scheduler gives for how much flexibility there is to uh, re-engineer that schedule. I'm going to show you some other examples of Preactor now. Each example accentuates different aspects of Preactor. And with that first example, you might be thinking, okay, Dave, you've got 16 jobs in your schedule. It's pretty easy to see what's going on when you've only got 16 jobs, but I've got hundreds of jobs in my shop, thousands of operation steps. How do I know what's going on? Well, here I've got more data, and if I give each job a different color, there's a whole kaleidoscope of colors. So how do I know what's going on? Well, what is it you need to know? First thing you need to know is where are my late orders? And again, I still see red bar above my late orders. 
But if you've got hundreds of jobs in your schedule, you're not going to want to go looking through the schedule to find red bars. Now, I've got a late orders report, but I've also got some online tools where I can highlight all the orders that are late, all the orders that are on the schedule earlier than their material is available, or by any other criteria I could come up with, I could create my own filter, anything that you could create a where clause with a, a SQL statement, and I could find operations in my schedule. I can also, instead of giving each job a different color, I can change my coloring scheme and I'm going to change so that I'm coloring by product. And as I do this, I see a little more clarity what's going on in this plant. Well, what is going on in this plant? This is a seed manufacturer. We're packing whole heart seeds in this part of the plant. We're pressing seeds into oil. We're grinding seeds into powder. But it all starts at the top of the the uh, planting board here where we're de-hauling and cleaning the seeds. And if I change this to coloring by product attribute, now I really see what's going on. And that is that whenever I change from non-organic to organic, I have this cleanup time that has to happen to prevent contamination. I could also change the text on the screen. to anything you have in your ERP system or any other piece of data that you wanted to capture uh, related to an operation step, Reactor could bring that information in and uh, change the colors on the screen or change the text on the screen based on uh, whatever attributes that you would provide you the most clarity to your schedule. Now this example is a pigment manufacturer. I've got four vats and they are making pigment color. If it was the food industry, it could be sauces, it could be metal shavings, it could be coatings. The point of this example is that if I use the simple forward sequence by priority from my job shop example, I can look at this and I can tell just by looking at it, it's inefficient. First of all, I have gaps of time where nothing is, this fat is not being used. And that is because I have a limited number of racks. I only have two racks here. And as I drag through my schedule, I can see the jobs that are using the rack, and I can see that it's that limitation that's preventing me from efficiently using my vats. But I also see that I've got a lot of cleanup time. And this cleanup time is sequence dependent. What that means is going from white to black is small, going from black to white is large. The amount of cleanup time depends on what product I'm going from to going to. And if I were to quantify this cleanup time, I have nearly 60 hours of cleanup. If I use a more advanced algorithm, I can tell just by looking at this schedule that it's more efficient, it still may not be optimal, but now I've gone from 
nearly 60 hours down to 18. I've cut my cleanup time to a third. This is just one example of the advanced algorithms that Preactor has. There are other algorithms that minimize WIP, campaigning rules, advanced algorithms that dynamically figure out what your bottleneck process is and then backwards schedules everything prior to that process step and forward schedules everything afterwards. And Preactor is uniquely architected in a way that you can create custom scheduling rules because even though Preactor has a number of advanced algorithms, you, you may have constraints. Tribal knowledge is maybe used in your plant to schedule and you can create custom scheduling rules that incorporate all that tribal knowledge into the rule. The, the neat thing with Preactor is that those, the ability to create those custom scheduling rules are in a modeling layer that even our clients have access to that. You don't have to um, go off and uh, uh, always rely on an outside consultant to do that work. This example is a bicycle manufacturer. In this part of the plant, we are assembling subcomponents, hubs, wheels, pedals. In this part of the plant, we are cutting bike frames, we're welding them, we're painting them. In this part of the plant, we are assembling the, the bicycle. And if I take a look at one of these work orders, Preactor, based on the bill of materials and the pegging rules, understands that work order A202 for the final assembly is linked to work order A102, A003, and A105. Separate work orders linked together, and my work order A0, A105 is linked to some materials. Now this supply line shows me materials that are required and if the diamond is over here, those materials are already in inventory. If the diamond is out in the future, then this is a purchase order that we are still waiting to receive. And if I receive a phone call from the supplier, or maybe the purchasing agent receives a phone call from the supplier, We are informed that the material won't be available for two more days. That gets entered into your ERP system. Through the interface, it gets received down to Preactor. When it hits Preactor, now we see this material out in the future, dotted red line. This operation step now has a green bar across the top and green text telling us that this operation is on the schedule earlier than all the material is available. I can come in and fix that with my re one-click repair. When I do that, it pushes that operation step out. That pushes the final assembly out of four work orders here. And I see that I've got a connection here to a sales order. I can pull up that sales order and see who it is I need to call. I have another tool here for visualizing these relationships. We call this the Material Explorer. So this work order for 25 bikes is going to a sales order for 15 bikes and 10 bikes are being put into inventory and will be allocated to a, a sales order at some future time. On the supply side, I'm purchasing the saddles this is when the delivery of the saddles is expected. And I'm assembling the bike frames, the wheels, and the pedals internally. 
And again, here's when we plan to do those internal assemblies. I can see the inventory levels of each of those materials over time. And if I drill backwards into this work order, I see that the hubs in the rims are being assembled internally. The spokes and the tires are being purchased externally. So I could support a multi-tiered bill of material and see the relationships. If I had a material shortage, I would see a yellow diamond there. And over here, I would see a list of materials that I'm short. Thank mm -hmm. you.